Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin, my 2D RPG about a marine biologist made with the Godot engine. We're kicking off today's episode just a few days after the successful conclusion of a massive month-long effort to convert Dauphin's codebase for use with Godot 4. The results of this have been great. Aside from a few bugs here and there, all of Dauphin's core functionality has been restored and going forward, I am really excited to take advantage of everything Godot 4 has to offer, especially the next iteration of GDScript. Speaking of going forward, it's been pretty much a whole month since I've built any new functionality for Dauphin, and after fixing nearly 400 errors associated with the codebase conversion, I'm ready to get back to building stuff. At the conclusion of the previous devlog, all the way back in October, we had just wrapped up the ability to cast a fishing line from a fully configured and equipped fishing setup. With the bait in the water, it's time to enter the second phase of development for the fishing skill, which is actually catching a fish. So I know this board needs a little bit of work here, but I do have a basic layout for the final milestones of the fishing skill here. The first of these is the player's visualization of the fish, meaning that they can see a shadow of the fish underneath the water. I want the player to be able to see this shadow when they're just walking along the beach or when they cast into seemingly empty water and see shadows approaching the bait. Once the bait's in the water, I want the player to have some control of how they actually reel the bait back towards their character, regardless of whether or not there's a fish nearby. I like to think back to Ocarina of Time, where you could either reel your bait back in a linear way, or kind of jig the line so that the bait wiggled back and forth, and paying a little more attention to how you were doing that would increase your hookup rate. Finally, once we have a fish approaching the bait in the water, we want to be able to set the hook and begin the process of reeling that fish in. Unfortunately, I'm still kind of noodling on what I want the gameplay to look like for that reeling minigame. I want it to be engaging, but not so challenging or complicated that it wouldn't be fun just to chill out with a cup of coffee and fish for half an hour. It would actually be a huge help if you do have a favorite RPG where fishing is just super fun. Leave that down below in a comment or upvote someone else's comment who's mentioned the same game. I will go research those and try to broaden my horizons of what fishing can be in an RPG. In the meantime, there is definitely plenty for me to do here, and I'm pretty excited to build out the outlines or shadows of the fish that we see out in the water. I think it'd be super cool to be just strolling down the beach and see an outline of like a giant grouper out there that you might want to try and catch. So I'm going to go heads down on that now and hopefully catch up with an update soon. All right, fast forward to the next day, and it turns out that yesterday evening and this morning, I was able to make quite a bit of progress. So as you probably noticed from my B-roll there, I started out yesterday by creating a fish for the player to spot from the beach. This is kind of meant to look like a goliath grouper, and I do realize that's a fish that you would be very unlikely to see while walking down the beach, but he does look pretty cool, and he should give us a strong foundation for building out the rest of the reeling system. Once I had that artwork completed, I pulled it into the engine and used it as the foundation for a new fish scene. And this fish scene has a couple things going on here. The first of which probably worth calling out is the shader that I'm using. And this is just a really simple shader that I was able to throw together quite quickly. And what this shader does is allow me to toggle a masking color and opacity for this fish. So when I check a box down here in my shader parameters, it will effectively turn all of the colors of the sprite to a very dark color and reduce the opacity to basically make this fish look like a silhouette or a shadow. Looking over at the scene hierarchy here on the left, you'll also notice that this fish has a state machine with two available states. And these are actually the two states that are also found on the sandpiper. We have a wander state and a fear state. With my wander state, I can specify whether I want this organism to kind of wander back and forth horizontally or vertically and supply values for movement speed, acceleration, friction, and the amount of time moving in a given direction. The fear state is a state that will move this scene in the opposite direction of a detected threat once that threat is detected. So in this case, that'll be the player. When the player gets too close to the fish, the fish will swim away and ultimately disappear. Also worth calling out here are my two Area 2D children of this fish. The first of these is called the bait detector, and as you might expect, this is a big circle that will allow the fish to detect bait that is casted nearby. The other circle is the player detection circle, which is what triggers the fear state when the player enters this collider. This all comes together here in my island scene where I can just instantiate this grouper out here in the ocean. So if I zoom out a bit, you'll see this big fellow just trolling back and forth looking for something to eat. And if I decide to get too close instead of casting my fishing pole from a distance, he will turn tail and head out. 
Now I think there's obviously quite a bit of polish to be added to everything we just looked at here, but at the end of the day, we have a fish we can spawn out in the ocean that can swim back and forth and detect when there is bait nearby. That should be really the core of what we need to get the fish interested in bait and start the process of biting and reeling. Before we get to biting, I definitely do want to spend some time on reeling. As I mentioned before, I want the player to be able to reel the bait in in kind of a linear way and also jig the line so that the bait flip flops back and forth to get more interest from the fish. So that's what I'm going to work on next. We'll catch up again soon. While I'm working on that, I want to give a long overdue shout out to the folks over at IQNix who sent me a new keyboard to test out back during my month long conversion effort. This board is from the ZX75 line and features the Camp Life colorway. Like my other two IQNix boards, this one has a feature set that honestly works very well for my workflow. The 2.4 GHz wireless USB connection obviously keeps my desktop clean, but more importantly, it provides a much more stable and lower latency connection than previous Bluetooth keyboards I've owned, which is ideal for my weekly Warzone nights with my buddies. Battery life is also awesome on this thing. I couldn't actually tell you how long I go between charges because I honestly lose track. IQNix claims on their website that with a Bluetooth connection and backlights turned off with eight hours per day of usage, the battery will last 300 days, which is pretty gnarly. I also like that I can easily swap between layouts for Mac OS and Windows, given that I do my dev work on a Mac and my gaming on a PC. The little multimedia knob up here in the top right corner works flawlessly with both and even works for my iPad when I'm using universal control. Finally, in my opinion, this thing just sounds great for an out of the box experience. This has been a great solution for me as a person who wants to build a custom, nice sounding keyboard, but has not found the time yet. If you want to pick one up, I'll have a link down in the description that'll save you some money and support the channel at no cost to you. Thanks IQNix for the continued support. All right, back to the fishing system. It's been a few days since our last update and I've spent that time trying to make the system a bit more flexible to allow for things like reeling and jigging the line instead of just casting and retrieving it. So we'll jump in and take a look. Here's what the beginning of reeling currently looks like. We can cast out in front of the player here and once the bait is in the water, instead of flipping the bait directly back towards the player, we can hold left click to pull the bait towards the player and update the line that connects the fishing pole to the bait. At any time, we can right click to flip the bait back up to the player, or if we get to a certain distance away from the player, the player will do that automatically and collect the bait again. There are definitely a few issues with this that I see currently, and mainly that revolves around how robotic this feels. The bait immediately starts moving and immediately stops when you release the mouse button, and there's no kind of notion of the bait bobbing around in the water as the waves are moving up and down. So the whole thing feels a bit too static and robotic, something I'm definitely gonna be working on here in the very near future. If you're curious as to how I'm adding new functionality to the fishing system, it really all comes down to two classes here in my code. The player fish state, which is entered when the player uses the fishing rod from their item bar, and the fishing rod tool, which is the script behind the fishing rod that the player holds in their hand. And of course, when we enter the player fish state, we know about the fishing rod tool in the player's hands. Everything that actually happens while the player is fishing is driven by the fishing state enum here in the player fish state. So when we are holding the rod to cast it, we're checking to see if it's a good place to cast, casting, jigging, reeling, etc. We keep track of that with a current state variable here. And I'm actually taking advantage of a cool new feature in Godot 4, which is a much nicer syntax, in my opinion, for getters and setters. The cool thing I'm doing here is when we set a new state on our kind of parent player fish state here, I pass that state also down to the fishing rod that we were just talking about. In the fishing rod itself, we are also making use of those cool new getters and setters. So when we set that fishing state on the mode variable here in the fishing rod, we're also using the setter to call a function update state. So if we look at that, you can see that that's where we actually check to see what the new state is and make some decisions on what we want to do based on that state. Once the fishing rod has responded to the new state and has done whatever it needs to with the bait or the fishing line, it signals back up to the player fish state that it has just finished its task. So for example, we can signal up that the bait has been casted, retrieved back to the player, or in the case of reeling, when the bait is too close to the player, and this is how we tell the fishing state that we're actually ready to retrieve it. 
With all that said, I think we're actually in a pretty good spot here and have a strong foundation to build on to improve the behavior or appearance of bait in the water and also add a jigging feature to allow the player to kind of pop the line and make the bait look more interesting. I'm gonna go heads down on that now and we'll catch up soon. All right, joining you back after a very productive coding session, a break for lunch, and a walk with Moose. Unfortunately, I have still not embarked on the task of creating the jig effect for the bait, but I did go in and make some really big improvements to the way that the bait looks in the water and what reeling looks like when you're holding down the left mouse button, so I wanna take a quick look. Jumping right into it here, I'll go ahead and cast the bait out into the water and walk through the changes one by one. The first change you'll notice is that right when the bait hits the water, apart from just seeing a little splash, we will also see a ripple that kind of expands and fades out. You'll also notice that the line is more precisely connected to the bait down here, which is also kind of slowly floating up and down as the waves ebb and flow. The biggest changes here really come into play when I start to reel this bait in. So if I hold down the left mouse button, you'll see that the bait slides towards the player and kind of has a friction element associated with it when I let go of the mouse button. So it's not quite as robotic and immediate as the movement was before. And of course, you can see that we are spawning those ripples behind the bait as we move it towards the player. Overall, just a really nice effect that actually makes this thing look a bit more like it's traveling through the water. The most important change under the hood to support all this was changing the base type of the fishing rod bait from a node 2D to a character body 2D. What this does is give me an inherent velocity property that I can modify and then call move and slide to move this bait instead of just modifying its global position directly. I still do modify the global position directly when I'm casting because I have to do some kind of trigonometry calculations to figure out the casting path. But after that point, I can almost kind of simulate adding forces to this bait to bring it back towards the player. With this foundation improved, I'm definitely ready to allow the player to provide some different forces to the bait to make it look more interesting to fish in the water. So that's up next. Well, good news, y'all. It turns out that after refactoring my bait to be a character body 2D and use its inherent velocity for movement, it was super easy to implement kind of a jigging input from the player here. So of course, we're out here in the water with our line casted. If I left click, we reel in as normal. But if I hit W, A, S, or D, we will perform kind of a very quick movement, only once, that pulls the bait a little bit closer to the player, basically just applying a higher immediate velocity to the bait rather than a sustained one when we're holding down the mouse button. I have to say with these two new inputs for fishing along with the visual enhancements I made with the ripple effects today, the fishing system has like really come alive in the past couple of hours here and I'm really excited to continue building it out. With that said, it is now the afternoon of December 21st and after the past week making so much progress here, I think it's time to take a brief break and spend some time with friends and family over the holidays. As always, I want to extend a huge thank you to the folks who support Dolphin's development and this channel on Patreon. Grammy supporters this month are Mega Ombre, Jess Sargo, Samuel SVD, Kyle Van Riper, and Sergeant Bobby Bobowitz. Beta supporters are Cody Odin, Vlad Sunny, Deluse, Happy Hippie, and Universal Codex. I really hope you enjoyed this devlog, and I hope you'll stick around at the beginning of the new year for more episodes of Dolphin's development. Until then, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday and stay safe.